Hello friends and thank you very much for all the kind and positive comments. As you can probably hear by my voice, I'm feeling so much better. The recovery is going really well. All good. In this video, I'm going to share probably the most stupid and uh, risky paint finish I've attempted so far. It's yellow and it's yellow lacquer paint over dark gray using the underpainting to bring up a cool finish. We will prime the model, add our main detail color, block in our base camo color, realize that I didn't really fix all of the seam lines, do an in-progress repair and recovery, and then resume painting with the distressed dark yellow main camo color. So why did I do it? Well, my last finished model was the camo, and I did that with an all airbrush uh, methodology, and I really enjoyed that. So because I enjoyed that, let's flip the switch and do something completely different and go back to hand brushing. Plus, if I'm honest, I, I get a feeling for the, uh, the older machining Krieger designs that um, they somehow feel authentic with a very visceral style. So I wanted to share that as well. As I share more developed versions of the Grosselhund, I'll also update, augment my style and change the, uh, the way I approach them and the uh, paint mediums I'll be using. Plus, to be super honest about it, I just find this kind of approach uh, personally entertaining. Oh, and if you find the smell bothersome, make sure you've got plenty of ventilation and um, consider masking up. I mean, we're not atomizing the paint, but it is an organic solvent, so I want you to take care of yourself too. Uh, when I'm airbrushing and hand brushing with solvent paints, I do wear the mask. Okay, let's get going. Priming. With any method of painting, it's always a great idea to start with a primer. You'll often see me use surfacer products in a can and via airbrush, and they are perfect, but we can also just use regular lacquer paints as well. Lacquer paints are ideal as they chemically etch into the plastic surface. The only difference is they don't contain the surface of filler agents, so they tend to be a little thinner. We can make that work. Seriously, this is a perfectly legit way of priming too. You trust me, right? I'm going to mix two favorites to make a primer color here, Mr. Propeller Color, our wonderful warm brown, and mix it with another perfect primer, Flat Black, also from Mr. Color. Yes, when working with these paints in jars, I feel the paint mixer is a wonderful investment. The speed and time savings, plus the peace of mind that my paints are properly mixed is totally worth it. Using the paint I've placed in the dish to paint off the stirrer. No, it's not that I'm super stingy, it's to get the paint to the right consistency. Maybe it's a little superstition of mine, but I swear the best paint comes off the stirrer like this, and I use it straight onto the model whenever I can. When priming, you want to be able to lay on a reasonable thickness and I prefer not to use a sharp or new brush for it. In fact, for fun, I've decided to only use old brushes for this video to illustrate their usefulness. I find that older brushes can hold a little more paint and have a wider, softer contact point, perfect for when we don't want to be too focused. I've kept this nice and loose and I'm just looking for an even, no drip, no run coverage. I'm using self-leveling thinner and it really does what its name implies and slows the paint just a little so that it flows really well, even in the super warm, dry weather we're having here in uh, Sydney, Australia. Seriously, just zoom this step on. Not too thick, add a little thinner if you need and pace yourself so that it feels nice and light. Use the opportunity to further learn your way around the genius design and think about your next color placements and potential weathering shenanigans we are going to get up to soon. It's at this stage that I will start dismantling the model to allow for easier access. Some armor parts are better painted off so that we can reach inside the hip structure for example and the little details on the Panzerschreck launches are easily painted and help expose the torso which is a real joy to paint up. The camera likes focusing in here too. One little side note that I'd like to bring up is that this paint methodology is not fast. Cans and airbrushes are way faster, but it does have a nice start-stop sort of timing. You know, you can stop at any time, place a cover over your work and paint, and then restart when you're able to come back to it. This works for many folks to get some time in on their hobby between their other activities and responsibilities. Black grey is the classic colour for use in background details on Mission and Cricket kits. Now we don't have to use it at all, 
But it does feel good sometimes to be so right, don't you think? You will <laughs> notice that I'm adding it to my dark grey dish and I'm not leading you astray, I promise. I can guess that I'll need around one stir worth of black grey for this stage on this kit and it will mostly be finished before the next colour. Yes, it really is okay and we can totally get away with it. The mix actually helps our colours to work together too. This is the colour to paint on the inside of armour plates, the inside of hip structures, the joints and even the big dog's scary AF manipulator hand thingy. It's basic and bland enough to always work well and I highly recommend this colour for your collection. Next, the grey-violet first colour coat and underpainting step. Let's zoom along to our next colour and I'm going to show you how I love painting straight off the stirrer as promised. It's totally the best paint ever somehow for coverage and beautiful brushing. See? In fact, I love it so much, I'll do it again for you. Okay, I'm mostly kidding around and just making it fun for laughs, but I really do do it. You can see that it was perhaps a little generous with the paint volume I've added, but you can see me recovering quickly as well, uh, shifting it into new places. That's the fun part. We need to put the fresh paint onto new dry areas so that it doesn't lift up too much primer and so that it will be still thick enough for coverage without being too thick to dry in an unsightly way. I mean, yeah, that's the kind of different things we're working with. I'm more working to leave some more of the primer colors showing through in a few places so that I can rework them into faux chips in the future weathering as well. You'll also spot me using the other sections of the brush, which helps us in a number of ways. It makes the brush's footprint much bigger and drops the paint in a really different way than using the point, which is kind of like having another larger brush already in your hands and it can work well for some painting shapes. You will totally know when to do this. The brush will tell you. Go for medium coverage on this step. The next color is the one that will do more of the lifting. Mahogany surface <laughs> recovery. Okay, confession time. I built this kit when I was suffering from a, a couple of health challenges late last year, and I'll be honest, I don't remember much at all. Whilst applying the previous step, it became pretty obvious that I had not completely fixed up some of the seam lines. So, you know, instead of swear bombs, I thought this was actually a fantastic opportunity for me to share a little recovery strategy that is particularly well suited to this painting style. I'll paint in some surfacer, smooth it off and keep it as part of the layering and camo pattern. Yes, it really is that simple and easy. I grabbed my surfacer in Jars collection. Any of these would do, but thankfully I still had some in mahogany, which is perfect for this project. Lucky! I've mixed some up and put it in the first primer dish, which will also be great for use in a future project. Really simply, I've painted it on without any thinner added. Again, straight off the stirrer. It was thinner at first and then thickened up as I worked. I mean, all good. This is not a finesse job. Just zoom around and cover any seams that need a bit of work. Then after it dried, I gently and carefully, so as not to disturb too much of the gray violet paint layer, I sanded down the surfacer until the seam line and the plastic were good again. You know, <laughs> like I was supposed to bloody do in the first place. Here's where that dark mahogany plastic really came back to help me, as it was exposed again in places. That's okay, and the next layers of lacquer paint, being primers as well, will stick to it just fine. In fact, I've left a few spots either for direct paint over with the dark yellow, um, as to improve the variations in the surface, and I've even left a couple exposed to serve as abrasion and damage marks in the final finish. It's almost like a winning fail, but probably best to keep that between you and me and maybe YouTube. Now for the main event, the worn dark yellow. Okay, we've made it to our main color and the top of our camouflage pattern. This will start out as per the other stages, but brush type and application are going to be subtly different enough so that it will make for a totally different outcome, a very worn and beat up looking dark yellow. It will be the perfect base for subsequent detailing and weathering steps to improve. Yeah, shenanigans in a future video. So please make sure to like and subscribe. A slight word of caution though, 
this is a little risky and not particularly recoverable. You kind of get one shot at it, so a little experience is advised. The line between, wow, that's cool, and total mess is pretty fine. Myself, I found this step thrilling. I'm using Mr. Color Middlestone here for the dark yellow and thinning it just a little more than for base coating. The brush is very different than the round brushes used up until now. It's very well-worn flat brush that has achieved maximum mank. <laughs> but that I mean, it's just, it's a very well used brush that is fully splayed and very interesting. It's had a great life and has seen things. We will tap into that experience and give it another fright to remember. I've loaded the brush so that it's quite wet, maybe even a little overloaded because we're going to use it as a bit of a stamp. The paint will be applied in a flat stamping motion. You can see that I've stamped paint onto the surface whilst the brush is fully loaded. Spread the coverage out and then come back for a retouch to gently paint some of the areas in between and then a third round of gentle touches to adjust the surface. As you linger the paint in some areas, it will reactivate and combine with your grey-violet underpainting for a beautiful shaded effect. But, word to the wise, use this very sparingly. Too much and it will look muddy and be a mess. That's the risk, sadly. Speed and movement here are key. We only get a couple of touches and then need to move on. But what a surface it starts building. It's already starting to look amazing to me. For some smaller details, I did swap out to the same round brush we used in earlier steps. It's also super handy to keep close to brush out bubbles that can be created. Just pop them gently and move on. I'm working to keep it brighter and more solidly yellow towards the top of the model and break up the yellow coverage as we move down to expose more of the grey, violet and even the primer base colours. In a way, it's a desert yellow scheme in the style of winter camouflage, so I did reference that beautiful paint card whilst working. It's such a wonderful inspiration. Lastly, we can come back to our paint dish and simply add clean leveling thinner and make a much thinner glazing sort of paint mix, which can be applied as a secondary and tertiary layer to some of the upper facing dark yellow. We can linger in some sections also to touch and reactivate the grey violet underpaint, which then acts to shade our dark yellow. We can produce a great deal of variance this way between our cleaner, brighter dark yellow and our mixed slightly grey violet shaded applications, such as is visible on the Grosserhund's right arm here. See how the shoulder armor and wrist plate are bright, whereas the forearm and elbow are shaded? All done with this one step on the fly. Thank you very much to my Patreon supporters for paying me to make and share this video about how I've painted up my early Grosserhund kit. I've got lots more photos and early shares from my next book, The MAK Lincoln Report Volume 2, over here on Patreon, Paint on Plastic. Please consider joining us, I really appreciate you. For more of my work, please also check out paintonplastic.com and my books. Links are in the description for you.